Okay, so true story, I was scared to try tampons because I didn't know if they'd be able to protect like pads. Took me a few tries, but once inserted properly, tampons shouldn't hurt. If you feel it, it's not in far enough. Believe me, it changed my life. Like pads, tampons offer up to 100% leak-free protection, whether you're on the go or chilling at home. Now I do and wear whatever I want on my period, thanks to the freedom and flexibility I get with adding Tampax to my routine. Learn more at Tampax.com. Empire. He's different. He's the answer. Hello and welcome to my podcast. Those were the words of teammates describing Jaden Daniels after the game. Before I'm going to get to all that, a reminder, subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us there as part of Empire Media, A-M-P-I-R-E. Always much appreciated when you tune in. Don't forget, you can read my work on ESPN.com. have a st- multiple stories up now on the site about Jaden Daniels and the commander's 38 to 33 win over the Cincinnati Bengals on Monday night, man. So before, before I get into all that good stuff, a reminder, Bram Weinstein, the voice of commanders and I will be doing our regular live stream show at 7 30 PM Eastern time, Tuesday night. I'll be out in Arizona. So join us for that. Going to be bleary eyed, but I know you're going to want to talk about this one because it was quite a game for multiple, multiple reasons. Also, Austin Eckler did, he um, exited the game in the third quarter with a concussion, left the field, went into the locker room, and the concussion protocol was later diagnosed with that, ruled out he will not travel with the team overnight to Arizona. Dan Quinn will update his status on Tuesday. We will talk to Quinn at 545 Eastern time. Obviously, he's going to go into the concussion protocol, but we'll get more of an update from Quinn at Quinn at that time. Let's get to the good stuff here, folks, because this one is different. And it's not just because they won the game. There have been some other really big wins for this franchise over the last several years. The Steelers game and the in the I like whatever Tuesday night game it was when the Steelers were undefeated. Huge win. Really good opponent on the road. Going up to Monday on Monday night football, beating the Philadelphia Eagles, a team that was what undefeated at the time. Like those were monstrous wins. But the reason why this one sticks out is not just because of the win. The Bengals were 0 2. They had holes, and we went over those holes before the game. I talked a lot about those. And I one thing I would say is and I said this like guys like Jaden Daniels are different. Primetime games are made for guys like Daniels. They're just different that's why this game is different because of what he showed folks you got a quarterback and i i i know that's been kind of said before i've never said it like that okay last time i said that was 2012 he was robert griffin the third was really good there's a difference with Jaden daniels though and it comes back to to be honest to how well prepared he is and i think where he can advance his game as he continues to grow as a quarterback in the NFL. It's kind of hard to believe he can uh, top a 21 for 23, 250 yet four yard performance with two touchdowns, still no interceptions yet, but he's going to become even better. And that's why I think this game stands out. What he did tonight was impressive. This team has not punted for 14 straight drives, 14 straight scoring drives, not including kneel downs. I have not covered anything like that. This is really different. And I think that's why the game tonight stands out. And, and again, it's 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 the poise they show us, but we've talked about that. You know, it's it's just the big moments that he is rises up to. And we've seen it time and time again. And that's where I go back. Let's go into the locker room and here and I'll tell you what some of the players are talking about. I so I'm walking, I'm walking in and Jeremy Reeves is is walking out the door and um, just looks at Jaden Daniels said he's different. He's different. That is what these guys think. John Allen said he's the answer. We know he is. This is where they're at. Like these guys t- really, really it's this goes above it way beyond anything I've heard in recent years. I know with Sam Howell last year, there were times where these guys were saying stuff 
it's just different when you talk to them when you talk to terry mclaurin and when it's just when you're just talking casually you're not quote you're not getting quotes you're not doing anything but look in his eye you know that it's different there's just something about Jaden daniels in addition to listen you can see it on the field but it's not just that there were times like there's late in the game there there's fourth down and they're trying to get that play going and he's motioning the side to get it get it in but like Luke McCaffrey said, there's no panic with him when he does that. He's in the moment. He's locked in because he's just there. And this is the kind of competitor he is. That, you know, uh, Sam Cosby, I asked him, what's different about J- Jaden Daniels? For you, I, you've been around for a few years. You've been through a lot of this stuff. What's different with Daniels? And he gave one word, hope. Then he said, it's we believe, right? So he, he added two more words, but hope and we believe. That's what's coming. That's what's emanating from that locker room. Nick Allegretti said he's as composed as any rookie he's been around, any rookie quarterback he's been around. He was around Patrick Mahomes. So there's, you didn't say he's better than Mahomes, just more the composure that he plays with. Now, and Mahomes obviously didn't play as a rookie, but point is, this, there's just, they have bought in to Jaden Dan's. When you have that, you give it a franchise hope and confidence that you, and I saw, again, I go back to 12, never saw this with Robert. They never felt they were out of a game. And I think that's now how they feel. Now where this season goes, I don't know because you have thir- or 14 games left. It could go in multiple directions, but when you have Jaden Daniels, you have, as Cosme said, you have hope. There were multiple plays in this game that just jump out to you. And it, when he was at when he was at Arizona State as a rookie, I remember going back and watching the film of that. Because someone else told me, like, you watch all these great plays as last year. Yeah, that's great. Go back and watch the freshman film because what you saw then was the competitor in him. He didn't know what he was doing as a freshman, but he exceeded, he succeeded and excelled because of the competitive drive that he has. And you see this all the time. Like he likes being in these moments. And what I think really jumps out too is after the game, how composed he is just even talking to the media. He's not out there boasting. He's not out there doing anything other than basically, you know, he thanks the coaches for having confidence in him and faith in him to put him in certain situations. The fourth down and fours, the the touchdown throw to Terry McLaurin, all that stuff. But it's just like the fourth down and four. It's it, This is the maybe the pivotal play of the game. Actually, I think there may be another one, but I put this as a pivotal play for ESPN because if you don't get it, Bengals are going down and they've been moving the ball in this defense. But the way you keep the, and basically you don't, you come here and you're aggressive. You come here to win the game. And that's what Dan Quinn did. He put his faith in a rookie quarterback, knowing, feeling pretty damn confident. And there's a good reason. He zips the ball to Zach Ertz, first down, there you go. And it happened time and time again. The pass to Luke McCaffrey, another fourth down play. Was it fourth down and two? A 30-yard pass. Now, give McCaffrey credit on that one, too, because he goes, if you watch him in that play, he goes to sit in his own, but the linebackers are squeezing him there. So he just continues around the linebackers, gets to an open area. Good, savvy veteran. Or good sav- I say veteran. He's not a veteran. A good, rook- a good savvy veteran route running by a rookie in McCaffrey. Just a nice job and a really good job by Daniel. Stay composed, see him, get the ball to him. Boom. First, you know, it's a big play in the game. The touchdown, excuse me, the, man, do you want to talk about the, the touchdown pass to Terry McLaurin right now? Let's do it then because it's a cover zero blitz. You have a defender just breathing and he's about to hit Daniel's he unleashes the ball. It travels about 45 yards in the air, <clears throat> a perfect throw. Now, McLaurin went up to the coach, to Kingsbury at that time, he's like, give me the ball. I want the ball. He tells Jaden Daniels that too. So what do you do? You deliver You deliver a strike. You drop a dime in that bucket. Every day when we're out of practice, they're throwing, they're trying to hit a ball in the bucket, ball in the bucket. I don't see Jaden Daniels ever hitting that. You put him in a game. He hits the damn bucket because that's where he threw it to McLaurin. Just an absolute gem of a throw. I don't, what else do you say about that? But it was just the situation. He's about to be hit. 
No other rookie quarterback is doing this stuff, folks. That was impressive. The 55-yard throw to Terry McLaurin. Now, that may have been, like I told you, I thought the fourth and four pivotal play of the game, that 55-yard pass maybe a, is a huge play for the development of this offense. And it wasn't really, listen, we know Jaden Daniels can throw that ball. He's that's He made a living out of doing that at LSU. Not a surprise, but you need to see it here. And even McLaurin said they needed to see this here. Not that it was they doubted him. I just think it's good for them to see it. And it, you know, as he said, as McLaurin said, this is going to give this is going to give um, Daniels even more confidence, and it's just going to keep going up and up. But on that play, what I really and I told you that I thought McLaurin could have be a big factor in this one. First of all, there's good chemistry between the two. It, I was the first two games I thought was an aberration. They were other. There were multiple times in the first game where I thought they could have hooked up more, and so their yards could have the McLaurin's uh, stats could have been a lot different. But I also knew in this one, the way Cam Taylor Britt plays, and yes, the one, the guy who talked about the simplistic college offense, and as Zach Taylor, the Bengals coach, said after the game, is all he knows basically is that 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 offense has not punted since the season opener. So you might want to settle down on the college offense stuff there. But and if and if it is, you got beat by it in a big way. Anyway, on the 55 yarder, nothing necessarily. Sp- well, I would say not. I was going to say nothing special by McLaurin, except that it was. And here's where we go. So Cam Taylor Britton, I told you he's a really good corner, but he plays to his help. So he's not going to really play a lot. I Man, it's a lot of zone, knowing where the help is, but also where McLaurin lines up at that plays in the inside. They know that there's two ways you can go. You can go down to the inside, cut the double team. You can go to the outside. So what McLaurin has to do, he's got to be very patient and not turn back inside too soon because then you give Taylor Britt a chance to react that way. So he presses him knowing that, and actually he didn't know initially which way he was going to go. Bobby Ingram told him just be decisive, right? And then it's the receivers coach, be decisive on the play. So he starts to go up. He sees, he, he sees that Taylor Britt starts to open up to the outside, anticipating that go ball down the side because he's shown that too. As soon as he sees that he takes a couple more steps. If you cut too soon, gives him a chance to get back. He doesn't do that, cuts back and he a couple more yards, cuts back inside, and there come here comes a dime, another dime, or the first dime from Jaden Daniel. So just a really good job by those who connect that. But I told you, like there's good chemistry. They talk all the time. They're watching film together and talking about stuff all the time. So that connection is only to only going to grow because both of them, because of both how both of them approach this game. And that, to me, is where Jaden Daniels separates himself from any other of the young quarterbacks that I have covered, is, is the combination of talent and approach. Your teen requested a ride, but this time not from you. It's through their Uber teen account. You drive your teenager around a lot to their friend Jacob's house, their other friend Jake's house, to James's, to Jaden's, to Jalen's, to... Uh, Mom, this is Jake's house, not Jacob's. Now with an Uber teen account, your teen can request a ride under your supervision. They'll ride with a highly rated driver, and with live trip tracking, you'll follow along the whole ride to their friends' houses that all sound the same. Add your teen to your Uber account today. See app for details. Bye, Mom. Hiring for your small business? If you're not looking for professionals on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. That's like looking for your car keys in a fish tank. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't even visit other leading job sites. So start looking in the right place. With LinkedIn, you can hire professionals like a professional. Post your free job on linkedin.com slash achieve today. This episode is brought to you by Atlassian. Atlassian makes the team collaboration software that powers enterprise businesses around the world, including over 80% of the Fortune 500. With Atlassian's AI-powered software like Jira, Confluence, and Loom, you'll have more time to do the work that matters. In fact, Atlassian customers experience a 25% reduction in project duration per year. Unleash the potential of your team at Atlassian.com. Atlassian. TD, Tuddy, in for six. Touchdowns matter more at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. We don't care how they score them. We want to bet on touchdowns, and DraftKings Sportsbook is delivering. Ready to place your first bet? Try betting on something simple like a player to score a touchdown. Go to DraftKings Sportsbook app and make your pick. 
Ready to do a touchdown dance of your own? New DraftKings customers bet $5 to get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the number one place to bet touchdowns. Download the Sportsbook app and use code KIME, that's code KIME, K-E-I-M, for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets when you bet just 5 bucks. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope ny 467 369 in connecticut help is available for problem gambling call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org please play responsibly on behalf of boot hill casino and resort kansas 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction void in ontario bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance for additional terms and responsible gaming resources see dkng.co slash ftball the fourth down and one, the competitor comes out. It's a fake, you know, you fake hand, you know, fake hand up. Just turn it up uh, over the right side of the line. Daniels, uh, we, you know, okay, we all know how slender he is, but he has no problem putting his head down, trying to get the yards through through that. And now I go back to his freshman year. I go back to that freshman year. So there was a play. I think it was against Oregon. He's running a two point conversion. He turns the end. Similar, well, not a similar play, but it's like he's just running around the end. Well, there are multiple defenders there. I'm like, how do you get out of this? Well, he gets out of it by turning up field, lowering his shoulder, and running through a guy at 160 some pounds. That's a competitor. And that's why I say that's the stuff you saw on the freshman tape at Arizona State. That's what we saw here tonight. That play, that's a have to have it play. And when he has to have it, he's going to take that extra yard or get that, get those yards and lower his shoulder and do all that. And that's what he did. And it and he picked it up because of competitor. He did a good job too. One of the things Dan Quinn talked about, and I'm going to watch, I want to watch some of the, I need to go back and rewatch the game. Haven't really done that. You know, and a lot of times I try to watch some of it again before I even tape this. Haven't really, hadn't had a chance. Folks, it's almost 2 a.m. and I got a 9 a.m. flight to Arizona. So I'm going to, you know, I, I wanted to get this out to you as soon as I could, but I felt like he did a better job of keeping his eyes upfield. Now, it didn't always result in a pass down the field. A couple of times it did. But I felt like he was more cognizant of that. And I think for for getting there a couple weeks into the season is really impressive. And so just so much stuff to build on with, with Jaden Daniels that, man, I'm going to guess that you may not have slept a lot on, on after that game. And I don't blame you because I think this is the first time that you can have a ton of hope. Not just, again, for the season, I don't know where it's going to go but you have to feel really good about what you've seen from him. Um, I mean, there were a couple other bulleted throws that he had and, you know, there are a lot of throws at the line and you know, blow whatever. Yeah. That's the NFL. The kid, you know, he's completing over 80% of his passes air yards are around 6.7 yards. So they're not always going to, but they're moving the hell out of the ball. Do you care where they're going? Because they're getting the ball down the field and he's very patient with it. And when there's a chance to attack, He's attacking. That's playing the position. That's the the patience and the poise that you need to play the position. And that's what Daniels is showing. That's that again. So whatever you want to call it, man, um, it works and it's been working. So, you know, where again, I'm sure there's going to be a time where Tressway has to punt again. And maybe part of the deal with that number swap was Jane Daniels told him like, Dude, I'm going to save your leg for the first few weeks. I don't know. But, you know, um, I, I think the good thing for this offense is that there's a lot of room to grow. I mean, Noah Brown just is starting to integrate himself. And he's going to – he's not going to – again, he's not going to be a 60-catch guy, but he can help this offense with some of those explosive plays. And we're going. You, I think you're going to see that. And then, like, Luke McCaffrey, I think, can become a little bit of a bigger part. I think there have been a couple times in the first couple of games where he's been more open for things. When Daniels keeps his eyes upfield, that's why it's key for him to see for for them to see that he's starting to do that. Now I don't know how often he was doing that, but it looks from the press box. And again, you got to go back and watch it and get all these angles. But from the press box, it looked like he was more aware of doing that. And that's where you're going to start. That's where you can start to see more big plays. Listen, the guy they're playing on Sunday, Kyler Murray, that's what he does, and it you know results in some monstrous plays. As, as I've already seen on film to Marvin Harrison and others because of that. So, uh, you know, the defense, 
I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because there's not a whole lot there. Like the one thing they did do is they forced a couple of field goals. That's what they needed to do tonight. Given the way the offense is playing, you cannot survive doing it like that because can the offense score 38 every game? Kind of a hard thing to do. Thought they would have a hard time tonight with T Higgins back. I thought, you know, the Bengals are really good offense. I did not like at all that they're covering Jamar Chase one-on-one. -on -one. They do not have the corners to do that. They did it a couple times. He scored two touchdowns when they did that. And, you know, no, nothing wrong with the effort. But what I also liked the defense, they had a couple of plays early in the game where Sam, Sam still, who got beat on one of the touchdowns, but he has a huge hit on the next series. You have Jeremy Chin with a huge hit uh, to jar ball loose on another possession. You have Frankie Louvu delivering blow after blow. So I think there were a lot of there were there were some things to take away. The run defense has got to get better, but you know we knew that, right? And you know, but I was I want to when I go back and watch the film, I'm going to be curious. Like, what is the issue still tonight? I told you what I thought there was the first couple of weeks. There's still a problem, and it's going to have to get fixed because teams are going to take more and more advantage of it. And there were way too many big gaps to run through where you know, like. It's not just a matter of breaking a tackle at the line. Now, there were a couple of missed tackles. Not just a matter of that. It's a matter of the gaps are too are too wide. And that has to change because if it doesn't change, they're going to put the one thing they said they didn't want to do with Jaden Daniels is have him put that cape on. Well, guess what? That's what he's going to have to do if they don't get that fixed and at least start to become a little bit better and forcing some punts and, and, and giving the ball back to an offense where you know now, like, they can do a lot and a, a lot because of number five. So um, I, I think I would say for you, you feel how you want. You should feel really good. Defense needs a lot of work. But again, going in, we knew the corners were going to need some work and, and they need work. The, the, they've got to fix some things. But enjoy this one, folks, because you listen to the players. And I know that you've heard a lot of this stuff over the years. What I'm, what I'm seeing in the locker room is different. What I'm hearing what I'm seeing on their faces is different. What you're hearing from them is different. You know, it, it, I, it sometimes can be hard to explain. I hope you're getting a feel for how different it is when you're hearing this. But I think the difference is to you're actually seeing it on the field. This is not a, this is not any, there's not guesswork and there's not, you know, um, anything other than this is now who you guys have to root for. Enjoy it. Anyways, by the way, I think I told you about this. I wrote a story about, and it ran, to, it ran on Monday, kind of a good timing, but that's the plan. But it was all about his historic game against Florida LSU. And you, what you saw, what you read in that story, if you read it, go back and read it, oral history, but it talks about all the talents, everything he showed in, in that game, we saw it tonight. And, and that's, so that's where we're going to call it a wrap here, folks. So I'll get into more of this stuff throughout the week. Again, Tuesday night, 7.30 Eastern time with Bram Weinstein, the voice of the commanders. I have more content coming at you, coming to you from Arizona. And, you know, 2-1, folks. Enjoy it. You got yourself a quarterback. Talk to you next time.